There's an unsung hero in the materials world. You might not know its name, but you deal with it every day. A material so ubiquitous but unnoticed, you're probably staring at it right now. This is the story of Indium-10 Oxide. Indium-10 Oxide, commonly abbreviated ITO, is one of the most widespread materials that doesn't get a lot of recognition. The reason? ITO is a transparent electrical conductor. That combination of transparency and conductivity is rare in the materials world. Very rare. And to see why, we'll need to look at the underlying physics involved. In solid materials, electrons can occupy various energy states. Some higher energy, some lower energy. They can be occupied or empty. There's a concept called the Fermi level that helps us understand how this works. The Fermi level is technically the average energy of electrons at absolute zero, but it can be visualized much more simply. Think of this as a water level for electrons. Below this level, energy states will tend to be filled, while above it, they'll tend to be empty. Like water, if you add some energy, you can make electrons splash and rise above this level, but the actual level, the place where water tends to be when at rest, doesn't change. The second concept we need to understand is that of band structures. In solid materials, the various energy levels that electrons can occupy form bands, regions of energy that are allowable. If there's no band at a certain energy level, an electron can't occupy that particular spot regardless of where the Fermi level is. In metals, bonding is relatively weak, so the bands near the Fermi level overlap, meaning there's no shortage of allowable states for electrons to occupy. The electrons are so free in metals that you'll often see the term electron gas in solid state physics, because in many ways electrons in a metal are free flowing in the same way. It's this lack of an energy barrier that tends to make metals good electrical conductors. When some voltage is applied, electrons are free to move. For semiconductors and insulators, the situation is a bit different. There's an energy gap between the bands near the Fermi level, called a band gap. Since the Fermi level sits in the middle of this gap, the states in the lower band, called the valence band, are mostly filled, while the states in the upper one, called the conduction band, are mostly empty. In this situation, electrons can't really move since there are no empty spaces. For electrical conduction to occur, an electron needs to jump from the valence to the conduction band. At room temperature, this will occur in a small fraction of electrons due to thermal energy. This leaves us with a negatively charged electron in the conduction band and a positively charged space in the valence band, where an electron is missing, called a hole. These electrons and holes are free to move, and they make conduction possible in semiconductors, but they're still less conductive than metals. Much less conductive. It also means that the larger the band gap is, the more insulating the material tends to be. So, what does all this mean for transparency? Well. If the energy of incoming light is equal to the difference between an occupied and unoccupied electron state, the electron can get excited to the higher state and the light gets absorbed. This means that for a material to be transparent, this band gap needs to be higher than the energy of visible light. In terms of electron volts, a unit of energy, visible light ranges from about 1.6 to 3.3. So, we need to find a material with a band gap of at least 3.3 electron volts for it to truly be transparent. This obviously rules out metals, since they have no band gap. It also rules out most semiconductors, since their band gaps are too small. For transparency, we need to venture into a range of things that have strong bonding and wide band gaps. Oxides are a good place to start. Indium oxide, in particular. So. How does this material, which should be an insulator, become an outstanding electrical conductor? 
That's where the material science comes in. We can't do much to change the band gap of indium oxide, but we can change the Fermi level through a process called doping. Not that kind of doping. Remember how in our illustration of a semiconductor, the number of electrons and holes was always equal? By extension, the distance between the Fermi level and the edge of both bands is also equal. But if the number of electrons and holes aren't balanced, that isn't the case. The atomic number of tin is one higher than indium, meaning it has one more electron. If we replace an indium atom with tin in indium oxide, we're essentially adding an electron without adding a hole. This also moves the Fermi level closer to the conduction band. To go back to our water level analogy, we're not just splashing water around anymore. We're actually adding more water, therefore changing the level. This doping process is used to create all sorts of electronics like transistors, but in those cases the doping level is usually relatively light. For example, in silicon electronics, the highest concentration of the dopant you'll typically see is about 0.0001%, or 1 in every 100,000 atoms. On the other hand, ITO is heavily doped. Very heavily doped. About 10% of the indium ions have been replaced with 10. ITO is essentially indium oxide that has been so heavily doped with 10 that it becomes degenerate. Not that kind of degenerate. Degeneracy actually means that the Fermi level moved so much that it crossed into the band. Since the Fermi level, the water level for electrons, is in the conduction band, the electrons are now free to flow in a way that's almost metallic. There's no more gap they need to jump in order to move. This is the secret to what gives ITO its extremely good electrical conductivity. While it's not quite as conductive as the best metals, it's enough to create a reasonably conductive surface on a very thin layer, and it maintains good transparency since the high band gap of indium oxide is still there. This is a picture of glass with an ITO coating. You can see a very slight yellowish tint over the part that's covered with ITO, but Overall, it's not all that different from your typical window glass. ITO's usefulness also extends a bit beyond just being clear and conductive. When I said ITO is transparent, that's true. For visible light. While the band gap energy is higher than visible light, higher energy ultraviolet light is easily absorbed. In addition, Infrared light also can't penetrate because the lower energy IR gets absorbed by exciting the free electrons in the conduction band. Basically, ITO transmits visible light and only visible light, which is useful to protect us against light that can damage our skin or transmit excess heat. The unique combination of properties, the transparency, the conductivity, and to a slightly lesser extent the UV and IR blocking properties, makes ITO common in a wide range of electronic applications. When I said in the intro that you're probably staring at ITO right now, it wasn't hyperbole. If you're watching this on any sort of smartphone or computer screen, there's probably an ITO layer in there. Whether it's a traditional LCD or a newer OLED screen, they both require a transparent conductor on their front surface. ITO is also used in solar panels, sodium vapor lamps, electrochromic windows, and many, many other applications. ITO is truly a staple of the modern world. It could very well be the most important material you've never heard of. But the story of ITO isn't necessarily one that ends with happily ever after. Indium is a rare and expensive element. And as the demand for transparent conductors increases, it's likely that ITO can't keep up, at least not alone. For this reason, finding ITO replacements is a hot topic in material science research right now. Other heavily doped oxides like FTO and AZO are viable candidates in certain applications, while more exotic materials like silver nanowires, conductive organic polymers, or graphene are being heavily researched. But for now, ITO remains king. It powers the technology we use every day, even though most probably don't know its name. Regardless of what the future holds, 
The story of ITO is one worth knowing.